Barbie's irrelevant. Barbie's dead, but sis. Barbie is bigger than ever. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I make lifestyle comedy skits and creative videos, but now I wanna to expand to more self-development and commentary videos like this. But these videos are most likely not going to be monetized, so there are gonna be some support links below if you wanna help my channel grow and help me make more videos like this. And don't forget to subscribe and like if you wanna see more of these videos. I do not condone sending hate or body shaming the people mentioned in this video. It has nothing to do with being biased. So please don't try to start drama in the comments when it has nothing to do with that. So. Beauty is subjective. There are so many factors that come into play when it comes to beauty, such as culture, tribes, country, time of living. For Asians, people desire white skin. Meanwhile, for Westerners, people desire tan, dark skin. In the 19th century, teeth blackening in Japan was considered beautiful, whereas now, it's all about having white teeth. In Fiji, traditionally, women with larger bodies are considered beautiful, but in the modern world, it's all about being skinny. It's so important to remember that the beauty standard is constantly and constantly changing because there will always be new trends, there will always be a new version of beauty. There was even a time where being skinny was not pretty and people desired to gain weight. What a time to be alive. Today's beauty standard is having a slim face, defined jawline, thin nose, big lips, flawless skin, no signs of acne, no signs of aging, no stretch marks, no cellulite, no scars. Asians desire white skin, meanwhile Westerners want dark tan skin, tall hourglass body, and a flat stomach, meanwhile having large breasts, large hips, and a large butt. Basically a brat stall. But this universal beauty standard goes way back to internalized racism, ideologies, and colorism due to the colonization of the Western world. This is a time of racial supremacy that dehumanized people of color. The white colonists taught our forefathers that our race is inferior. We are told that white is best, white is beauty. Europeans took away different versions of beauty from people of color and their cultures. After the Korean War in 1950s and early 1960s, American military doctors performed double eyelid surgery to to fix the oriental eyes of native patients. Well, let's go the American troops performed this surgery on Korean women for them to be considered more attractive to the eyes of American troops. What the f are you doing? The American troops did this on Korean men because their squinting eyes meant that the Americans couldn't trust them. Um, Why don't you go f build something or go die in a war like a, like a man's job is? And it was around this time the plastic surgery obsession in Korea began and people wanted to look more Caucasian. Before 1940, only white women were allowed to join the Miss America pageant. With globalization and the media, Eurocentric and Caucasian features dominate the world. People of color are pressured to subject themselves to Eurocentric beauty standards. Slave women were bred and created children and the children became lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter. And that the mother herself was often left out in the field. Why is that doll pretty? Because she's white. Why is that doll ugly? He's black. And why is that the nice doll? He's white. And why does that look bad? Because it's black. And why do you think that's a nice doll? Because she's white. I just don't like the way brown looks because the way brown looks looks really nasty for some reason but I don't know what reason mm, that's all. I like light-skinned women. I want you to be lighter than me. I love African-American women but I just don't like my skin complexion. So if you have a baby, you don't want your baby to be the same complexion as you? Mm -hmm. Why? This a dark ass shade. They be hell nah. Light I'm kids. so ugly. <gasps> What? No, you gonna make me cry. Black is beautiful, and if don't nobody ever tell you, I will tell you, you are gorgeous. But because of One of my teachers bullied me when I, mean, I was in like uh, class third or fourth. I was just a child, I don't know that I have a dark tone and all. For so long, people of color were told to whiten their skin, whether through bleaching or lightening products. 
Very often, Asian girls are told off by their own parents that they're too dark for playing out in the sun or that they're not beautiful because of their dark tone. It has also become so common and normalized for us to want to change our natural features, like our nose and our eyes, so we can appear more Caucasian. This has also led to the rise of African American hair care, such as wigs and straightenings. Yet ironically, the modern beauty standard is now shifting into the natural features of a black woman. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> what the in a world of patriarchy and misogyny, women are identified and valued based on their appearance. Meanwhile, men are praised for their professional success and strength. Women are taught to serve for men. They have no rights to question a man. Women are seen as property housewives. They are told to act, be disciplined, look, dress a certain way. The recent ad campaign in Malaysia told women that they need to dress up, pamper up, put on makeup, respect their men, do the chores to avoid domestic dispute. What the f is going on in here on this day? The beauty industry and media bombard young girls and women with the Western ideal of beauty on a global scale. Women are highly objectified and sexualized even from such a young age. They tell you what is conventionally pretty and what isn't. They tell you to shave and wax your body for the approval of men. They pressure you to wear makeup. A woman's magazine has 10 times more dieting and weight loss content than a man's magazine. During the showing of Love Island, they deliberately place plastic surgery adverts in between the breaks. They target middle class people with disposable income to buy their products. Blemishes, dark circles, facial flaws, and even enlarged veins, then Sone is just the thing you need. And all of this in the name of self-care. Women are seen as if they don't take care of themselves or they have given up on life if they don't try to follow this beauty standard. This exclusivity representing a minority sells by shaming. You are too fat, you are too this, you are too that. The unhealthy extreme thinness is glorified in praise. But then suddenly what they praised and pressure women to be is suddenly too skinny, too extreme. Several celebrities have opened up about their eating disorder. My, uh, my mom actually had a history with eating disorders. She had introduced me to anorexia um, because she thought it would uh, help me play younger roles for acting. And it was. <laughs> <laughs> Philippa Hamilton was fired by Polo for being overweight by their standard and apparently she couldn't fit into their clothes. Polo then even released an official poster that was ridiculously photoshopped and disproportionate. Victoria's Secret is an American brand known for their lingerie and clothing. Victoria's Secret also has a runway show shown every year. They don't cater to plus size. They were also known for providing model measurements that would be up on the website for girls and women to see. Over the years, Victoria's Secret has also become... Irrelevant. <laughs> but former models have come forward about the unrealistic pressure they were under. They were expected to stay a size 2 throughout their whole Victoria's Secret career. They do obsessive training, hashtag train like an angel. Former model Eric couldn't reach the weight loss target she was given despite working out twice a day. Her agents told her to stop eating, which led her to having an eating disorder for almost 4 years. One of the trainers said the diet was so extreme they weren't allowed broccoli or cauliflower. Brandy Melville is a clothing brand designed for young teenage girls. It's also owned by two old Italian men. Nothing creepy or anything. Brandy Melville only stocks one size fits all. Their target audience is basically the skinniest white girls. Their sizes are 0 to a 2. The waist inches are 24 to 25 inches. The average waist of a female aged 13 to 19 is 32.6 inches. So all the young girls and shoppers who can't fit into their one size fits all are basically told you are fat and not cool enough to fit into the brandy clothing. But thank god, people started calling out Brandy Melville for several reasons. <laughs> We see this facade of fame, glamour, and success, but over the years, the darker side of K-pop has been revealed. One after the other, K-pop stars are taking their own lives. Intense work pressure, extreme media scrutiny, and traumatizing online bullying. This video talks about how there is a strong emphasis on visuals and appearance. K-pop stars even have fan cams, which are designated cameras to each member of the group. 
Most of these K-pop stars are also known to be really skinny. K-pop stars are also known to be mistreated by their companies. <laughs> Agencies are also known for putting their stars on extreme diets, telling them to lose weight and that their weight can't start with a 5. There's a video of the girls from Red Velvet where they get so uncomfortable and slow down their eating when they see the manager from a distance because they're meant to be on a diet. K-pop stars are also known for commonly fainting on stage because they are overworked while put on extreme diets. Several K-pop stars have opened up about their eating disorders due to the pressure of being a K-pop star. And these K-pop stars are role models to millions of young people who aspire to be just like them. The desire for an hourglass body goes a long way back into history. Women and young girls have been trained to use corsets and waist trainers for centuries. Although the beauty standard is always changing, the desire for an hourglass body is making a comeback. By 1950s, US solidified their ideal beauty which was a Marilyn Monroe and the one and only Barbie. Barbie the supermodel was iconic for her beauty and her glamorous lifestyle. She had an hourglass body with blonde hair and blue eyes. Barbie became one of the most popular toy amongst young girls around the world. She had a significant impact as a role model to millions of young girls. But her unrealistic disproportionate body sparked debate about the impact it could have on young girls. There was a study of 68 year old girls where half of the girls were given thin Barbie dolls and the other half was given the curvy doll Tracy from Hairspray. The girls who played with the thinner dolls were unsatisfied with their bodies afterwards. Meanwhile, the girls who played with the Tracy doll were much happier with themselves and their body. A mother found a weight loss note by her 7 year old daughter. Some of the things said 5 glasses of water, 3 apples, ride bike 3 times a day, jog run up and down the driveway 3 times a day. It gets really messy. In 1960, Mattel officially released a Barbie slumber party set. This came with a comb, hair roller, sleeping bag. It also came with a scale that was permanently set to 110 pounds. And a book with the title well, nowadays, kids don't really play with toys. Barbie's irrelevant. But sis, Barbie is bigger than ever. Multi-million dollar empire known as the Kardashians. You don't have any, forgive me, any talent. But we're still entertaining people. As much as we want to hate the Kardashians, to be constantly bullied and body shamed by the media and people online, and as a younger sibling to be constantly compared to your older sibling and have your natural appearance made fun of, can have such a significant impact on one's mental health and body image. Chloe has talked about being called the fat sister her whole life, and her own family told her that it was hurting the family brand image. But when I did my research, I found something very interesting. When Kim was pregnant and had food cravings, her mother wasn't quite happy about it. Eating beignets, that's three times you know, a day. No, that was one trip. You know what you are? You're like a closet eater. You need an ankle bracelet. No, I don't. It goes off Because I eat so much eat healthier than bad. I did before. But when Chloe was pregnant... This is your lucky day. Are you... Okay. Yeah. The pregnancy of Khloe Kardashian. I can't eat eight dozen donuts. But I just want you to feel good about yourself and be able to let your hair down a little but bit listen. and say, I'm going to have a bowl of pasta or I'm going to eat but lasagna mom, tonight I, or have a can, donut. Can I speak? Three times you know, a day. No. It's pretty obvious the Kardashians are under so much pressure by their momager. But the Kardashians themselves aren't exactly innocent when it comes to promoting an unhealthy body image. The Kardashians have professional personal trainers, nutritionists, dietitians, and plastic surgeons. Yet they target millions of young girls and women claiming that they can attain the same body, same look by buying their products. The Kardashians have had history with weight loss fads, which they were later sued for. But that didn't stop them from doing weight loss sponsorships on Instagram, making false claims that that this is how they maintain and achieve their body. <laughs> Kim herself has promoted appetite suppressant lollipops to her millions of followers including young girls which can easily lead to developing an eating disorder. They've also promoted waist trainers which they were later sued for. Chloe has made claims that she started losing weight for the right reasons like her health but after her weight loss she decides to make a TV show exploiting others to lose weight but not for the right reasons but to get revenge on someone who did you wrong in the past. This wrong mindset for weight loss is so toxic and can very often become so obsessive and lead to an eating disorder. But Kim has herself has made some very tone deaf posts on her stories to millions of people. No, like I'm really concerned. I don't think you're eating. 
You look so skinny. You guys, I am. It takes work to look like that, and that's amazing. Celery, maybe Dif some yeah. lettuce. Different flavors of oxygen. Is that what you Okay, mean? tell me more, guys. No, I, what you, you guys, mean? I'm not that skinny. Look, she's like this, but she's anorexic here. Her arms yeah. are like pin thin. They look like my pinky. Kim's brand is known for basically selling her body shape. To me, they just make me feel really snatched. She doesn't talk about if she's done anything to herself, just that she loves to go through plastic surgeon Instagram accounts, research the new trends, and... Today, I am gonna get a butt x-ray, and if this is what it takes to shut up the entire world, that my butt is real, then I will happily do it. No implant. But liposuction doesn't show on x-ray. The Kardashians often deny plastic surgery. This is it. No breast implants. No surgery. The Kardashians are known for paying paparazzi to airbrush their photos. So when an unedited photo of Kim Kardashian's butt was posted showing her cellulite, Kim was genuinely in shock. She was so used to seeing airbrush photos of herself that she refused to believe that the photo was real. I don't get it. Like, I literally don't look like this. That's just not what I look like. It can really, like, hurt your soul if you hear enough bad things about you. People Even if you know you don't look like wrong. that. Imagine how tired we are of it. It is so toxic to these young girls and to people who think that they're natural and that this is all attainable without cosmetic surgery. So many young girls and women feel insecure about their bodies because of the Kardashians. A lot of these people aspire to look like the Kardashians too. There is a significant rise in Brazilian butt lifts for people wanting to look like the Kardashians. And one of her fans paid over half a million dollars to look like Kim Kardashian. She even got her ribs removed to achieve the body. She says the Kylie package is one of their most popular treatments. Kylie package. So she's having jaw filler and um, chin filler and she's having a lips as well. They are doing it because of media, aren't they? Social media. Nowadays, everyone wants to clone into the same Kylie Jenner Barbie look. It wasn't hard for me to find a young girl on Instagram with over a million followers. And when I compared her feed to someone like Kylie Jenner, it was almost identical. This young girl is 12 years old. Traditional media is notorious for retouching, airbrushing, and photoshopping. Even in music videos, the women's bodies are often altered. It used to be celebrities in magazines and posters that were being photoshopped. Now everyone has access to Facetune and Photoshop, Snapchat, and Instagram face filters. Even models and society's ideal women are still photoshopping themselves. People and young girls look up to these role models and think that this is what they actually look like. They think that they are actually this flawless. When in reality, these celebrities are human just like us. They don't always look like this. Still singing to see myself being a 12 year old girl standing in the front of mirror, saying shittiest words I could even imagine. It's like, dude, you are not beautiful. Like, look at you. You are a piece of shit. Like, those words hurt. Honestly, I just don't really feel comfortable in my own skin sometimes. I just avoid looking in the mirror because if I do, then I'll just think of how I want to be. But if I don't, I just think, hey, this is how I am. Let's deal with it. There's a Fiji case study based on the introduction of TVs in the 90s. In Fiji, being told you gain weight was considered a compliment. Having a large body was a symbol of status and beauty. Before the introduction of TV, there was no such thing as an eating disorder in Fiji. But after the introduction of television and Western media, young girls stopped wanting to look like their aunts and their mother. Instead, they wanted to look like what the media showed. Only after the introduction of television in Fiji, there were reports of girls developing an eating disorder. The young girls in Fiji started to see themselves as poor and fat. So this was a case study done in the 90s for the introduction of just television. Nowadays, so many kids and babies are gifted iPads and iPhones at such a young age. Younger and younger children are exposed to this distorted idea of beauty, which can have a significant impact on self-esteem and trigger a body dysmorphia disorder. There is so much evidence showing the rise in mental distress, depression, and suicide amongst younger people linking to social media. There has also been a significant rise in eating disorders over the past few years. Young Younger and younger girls are becoming obsessed with weight loss and dieting. And ultimately, it is all because of this unattainable beauty standard. 
educate and spread awareness about these issues. Even sharing this video and starting the conversation with one another, we need role models, schools, parents to teach others, to teach younger people about mental health, about body image, about eating disorders, and the impacts of social media. We need to learn to embrace our natural selves. You would tell someone you truly love that you love them for who they are, not how they look. You would tell them to embrace their natural selves. You wouldn't say all the nasty things you say to yourself and tell them to get plastic surgery to feel better about themselves. And the same should be said about yourself. The beauty standard is always changing and it's aimed to make you insecure so they can sell more. Profit greedy industries work with media outlets to offer us a distorted perception of ourselves and then use that distorted self image to sell us remedies for the distortion. It's hard to embrace our natural selves when for so long the representation in the media has been primarily Caucasians and Eurocentric features. The media's representation is only an insignificant population. It's telling us that we need to look a specific way. We are so beautiful in our own ways. There is so much beauty from all sizes and all ages and cultures that we need to celebrate. You don't need to be a specific height. You don't need to have a specific skin tone. We are allowed to have flaws and stretch marks and pores and acne and hair. There are so many beautiful different shapes of noses. Our body weight fluctuates and it is completely fine to do so. We are all aging. You are not any less beautiful for having wrinkles, for growing older. Don't ever compare your living, breathing, beautifully imperfect, real-life human self to someone else's controlled online content. We need to stop comparing ourselves to others, especially when we are all genetically different. And there are different types of bodies and shapes. Some people have faster metabolism and can eat so much without gaining weight. Some people work really hard but struggle to lose weight. These companies and industries are nothing without us. We are their source of money. We are the consumers. Do not underestimate the power we have, especially with social media. We've demanded a realistic and wider range of representation of bodies and women in the media, and we're actually getting it. There's a demand for less photoshopping and editing and embracing our natural selves. Movements like the body and beauty positivity teaches young girls and women to love themselves in a world that has taught them to hate themselves. So we are definitely evolving and progressing. That is all for today's video. If you guys did enjoy that, please do let me know in the comments because I would love to make more of these if you guys did enjoy that and would like to see more of that. Also comment down below if you want any particular topics you want me to discuss and talk about. There are going to be support links below if you do want to support my channel and help me grow and make more of these non-monetized videos. Don't forget to subscribe and like and please do share the video because this is a topic that I would love more people to have conversations about. So yeah. Yeah.